loud. Okay. Hello and welcome to EV Motoring. I'm Joe and it's time for an epic below zero cold weather range test of the all new 2025 Chevy Equinox LT EV all wheel drive. Starting our journey at negative six degrees. Car is charged up. It hit 100% and now it came back down to 99 while well preconditioning. We have the trip gauge reset. Time to begin. So I have the car charged up to 100%. It just ticked down to 99% while preconditioning, even though it was still on the charger. It was just pulling that much electricity, uh, trying to preheat it for about 10 minutes. Um, this is how I've done all of my range tests before. We always simulate like we are on a road trip. So we, so we charge up to 100% and we precondition the battery just as you would if you were at any hotel. We just purchased the 2025 Chevy Equinox LT all-wheel drive. It is, in my opinion, the best spec to get. 309 miles of rated range an 85 kilowatt hour battery and the dual motor setup substantially enhances the performance and increases a little bit of safety by having the all-wheel drive a little bit of more confidence here in the frigid midwest as you can see by it being negative eight degrees now we have about a two mile drive to get to the highway um, and then we will be on our way in my opinion this is the best spec it is the all-wheel drive but base LT with only one option package. It is a $2,000 option package that gets you heated seats, a leather wrapped heated steering wheel, as well as a, a safety package that includes a 360 camera. Uh, you know, from, uh, my, from my previous videos, I never think safety should be an option. So I'm always gonna check as many safety boxes as possible, especially during road tripping. I want those extra features there helping me if I start getting a little tired and the all-wheel drive system the base model is 0 to 60 in 8 seconds this gets it down to 5.8 seconds in my i mean if people can live the 8 seconds is you can live with it but i just strongly recommend checking the box for the all-wheel drive because it substantially enhances how how great of a car this is for the price all coming in at just at right at forty thousand dollars including destination just under forty thousand dollars before destination qualifies for the full tax credit at the time of filming this we do a 75 mile per hour range test because i find you know there's actually a lot of outlets out there that do 70 miles per hour where we live here in the midwest and especially people that live out west 70 miles an hour is uh, not even the speed limit 75 is most speed limits some places are even 80 so i just think it's a more realistic i try to get the more extreme cases just as i'm trying to do here when it's this cold outside to show you if you're doing 75 miles an hour this is what you can expect to get out of this car and know that you can always slow down a little bit if you need to stretch it a little bit more we also have a 2025 model y i'll be testing that later today too so stay tuned for that video that should come out one week after this one and uh, be sure to comment down below what uh, what range do you think this will get with in the all-wheel drive format and then let us know how you think it'll compete with how well it'll compete with the model y i have the climate control set to 72 degrees as i've done on all my previous range tests i have the heated seat at medium right now because it is still i had it on cold at first and it was very cold so i'm trying to just have this um you know, once I'm comfortable having the air turned down as much as I, as, as possible, but right now it's running at like a medium fan speed just to try to keep it still slightly cold in here. So um, this will also be a test for how this heating system works in these temperatures. I know I've road tripped in the Tesla before and it's done quite well in cold temperatures, but we'll be able to test that one out later today too. I don't think I've gotten to these temperatures before I've always been in some sort of pos uh, something positive. Right now, we're actually down to negative nine. I'll keep monitoring that through the drive. I'll also show rolling clips every 10% of the battery. So we can, and with, along with uh, efficiency, to show if the efficiency, how it changes during the journey. Now with some magic editing, I'll show you my route that I do for these range tests. 
we have a, just under a 10 mile per hour wind from the west. So that'll be a headwind on our way out to Rockford, towards Rockford. And it'll be a tailwind on the way back. You know, very limited days that we can get temperatures this cold. So we're trying to do the best with what we have. At least doing a, a loop, round trip loop, that best helps us try to negate these um, the winds so that way we're getting as accurate of a test as possible. So we're merging on the highway right now and let the journey begin. Twenty five percent into the journey. It's looking uh, like this will be a pretty quick range test. We've only made it 35 miles and we're averaging 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So um, I don't know if part of that is just the headwind. I have tried to turn the climate down a little bit uh, to fan speed four and it like fogged up in here immediately. So well, one rule that I've learned is this heating system in this uh, Equinox EV is not the best that I've experienced. So that's definitely costing us on using some extra energy, but I try, to, I try to keep all these tests consistent, have the same temperature, try to maintain that temperature with as little energy use as possible. So there we are. Uh, car is estimating 229 miles of range remaining. That is not gonna be a reality, we know that. But we'll uh, keep checking in as the drive goes. I am at 52% right now. Just pulled off to switch around because the next exit is a couple miles down the road. And we don't, certainly don't want to turn around after 50% uh, because that'll risk uh, making it back. So right now we've gone 68 miles, almost 69 miles. And we're up to 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So we once we merge back on the highway, should we should be right at about 50%. And uh, I mean, cr cruising on the highway, this thing is awesome. So, so quiet. I actually am convinced it's quieter than the Tesla, quieter than a lot of other vehicles I've been in, uh, gas or electric. But the efficiency of due to how much energy we need to use to heat this cabin, unfortunately, there's not a page that I'm aware of uh, in the, nav in, in the uh, screen here that'll show me how much energy we are using to heat the car but it is certainly a lot because stay tuned. You know, we will have a warm weather range test once, once uh, the weather cooperates. And I know this car is an awesome road trip machine as far as range goes in nice weather. Uh, right now, the car estimates 137 miles remaining. We know that's not true based on basically only getting 69 miles to get all the way out here. But I am very glad that Chevy does offer the percentage. There's a bunch of pages I can go through on my infotainment screen right here with my, with my speedometer. I can do full, full page maps. I can have this one that I use that has my trip info and my music, bunch of different pages. However, this is the only page that has the battery percentage. All the other ones just gives you the miles remaining. And I know miles remaining is useful for people coming out of a gas car, but uh, once you've driven electric a little bit, you quickly realize how much better percentage remaining is since the gasometer meter on miles remaining is always so incredibly inaccurate, at least in most cars that I've driven. So you have the percentage and you can easily kind of calculate okay, I, I used 20% to go 50 miles, or in this case, 50% uh, to go 70 miles. Here's how far I can make it then, rather than uh, being misled by uh, uh, the guessometer saying that we have 130 miles. That could really get you stranded. So ha having the percentage is much more important. We're back on the highway doing 75. It's been great conditions. Of course, I'll jinx that so far, but we have just been cruising, never really had anyone in front of us, uh, not for more than even a minute. We've held 75 consistently, so it's been a very good range test conditions. We're down to negative 12 degrees now, by the way. So 
something interesting as we tick down to 25%, still at 26 right now, is it estimates that we have 50 miles remaining. We've gone 112 miles. We're up to 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. But what's interesting is the Google Maps is smarter than the car. Car says we have 50 miles remaining. The Google Maps says if I was heading home, if I wanted to get directions home, it's 28 miles and I would get there with 10%. What I've noticed in the past with other vehicles that I've driven is the, in, the navigation is accurate based on the weather conditions outside, whereas the gasometer is not. Some cars do have accurate gasometers. I shouldn't put them all down, obviously, but right here it estimates if we went 27 miles home, we'll get there with 10%. A little bit more traffic we've encountered as uh, commuters start to hit the road, but we've right now it's very clear in front of us, so we've been work, doing our best to maintain clear road ahead of us, not drafting off of a vehicle, and maintaining 75 miles per hour. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna end this trip, trying to get as close to zero as possible. So I'm gonna crunch some more numbers and I think we'll check back in around five or 10%. So very interesting, I just exited, I'm at 11% and I'm actually already encountering accelerate reduced acceleration. That notification came in at 12% and so that's why I just exited at this exit and I'm actually gotten the turtle to pop up a couple times. I haven't been able to catch it on camera but basically we are right at turtle mode starting which I feel like that's maybe a little bit early on calling it turtle mode because we still are easily maintaining speed. Um, once I got the reduced acceleration notification, I wanted to exit then because I was worried about what we wanted to make sure we could still maintain highway speed. Also traffic was picking up. So I also logically didn't think we'd be able to maintain the 75 miles per hour efficiently uh, or you know to best represent the test. With 11% remaining, we're at 142.4 miles. Uh, we've gotten it up to 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That's a result of the what was a headwind now being a tailwind. So now I'm just going a couple miles, uh, gonna go to my parents' house so I can plug in there. And that, that sound you just heard is it again telling me that we have reduced acceleration. I'll try to capture the turtle when it pops up. I'll also be looking forward to when I do the warm weather range test, how this compares. You know, this, is, like I said, at 12%, uh, it told me acceleration was reduced and the turtle started popping up at 11%. So I'll be interested if it's the exact same conditions in warm weather or is the cold weather, you know, tricking the battery into, um, you know, or basically causing the battery to not have give uh, give as much power as it should at 11%. Most EVs that I've driven don't start having reduced acceleration until somewhere in the single digits, like, uh, you know, 5% or uh, 8, 5% or 7%, something like that. With that said, I do think that we could have maintained highway speed for a couple more miles. It just didn't work with where the exit ramps were to be able to loop around. So at 143 right now, we had a couple miles before we got on the highway too. I got to think right around 145 is pretty fair. 145 to 150 is the range I'll call it, especially considering the cold weather conditions. I wouldn't expect to push it much past that. Definitely some great data that I've gained on this trip because I have some road trips coming up and we want to decide which vehicle to use for each. And uh, this this performance in cold weather, it's been, <laughs> it would make for a pretty rough road trip, that's for sure. So we're really gonna have to think about what's the right car to use. It continues to give me that reduced acceleration warning. There we go at the bottom here. It keeps cycling between a red battery and there's the turtle. Um, I'm not experiencing what I would normally identify as turtle mode that really reduces the ability to maintain a safe speed. 
Maybe we couldn't maintain a highway speed now, but I'm still easily doing 45 miles an hour, 47 miles an hour. To me, turtle mode would be where you're kind of really crawling around in a parking lot. So a little bit uh, jump in the gun, I think, having the turtle light come on at 10%, 9%, but down to 9% now as we're pulling into my parents. Again, 145 miles we've gone. I think uh, 145 to 150 really is the safe range to call this 2025 Chevy Equinox EV all-wheel drive LT in sub-zero temperatures. So, so that's a wrap. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this content helpful, please do like and subscribe. It helps it reach more people. Also, be sure to let me know if you think the Tesla will do better or worse than this Equinox here. And uh, take care until next time.